Today I want to talk about a subject that I personally haven't heard for myself uh, from a preacher in all these years, and I haven't spoken of of it uh, myself. And it's about the Sabbath day, the Sabbath day, the seventh day. And so, um, as I I will be sharing multiple thoughts today. In the end, I'll try to summarize and make it simple. so that your 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 clarity and your takeaway is clear and of course there will be a point beyond which i will not articulate it to such a detail that i would tell you what you need to do on a sabbath day i leave that to the holy spirit to make that more personal for you but we just we're going to glean from god's word we're going to try and understand what god meant when he set apart the seventh day you know why did he do it you know what is the meaning of god's rest and what way did he bless it what way did he hallow it what does he expect of us as he has given us in his word what is our benefit and blessing as we keep the seventh day and the sabbath day and it's amazing uh, to see how you know god has put this rhythm in place in his creation yeah so here we go are you ready hum chahte hai ki aap hamare sath vartalap kare so you know as i talk to you i'll ask you certain things so don't be self conscious you know just if there's some sort of self conscious at the back or just take it and put it in your purse right now chhod do just be relaxed okay all right here we go okay so the origin of the sabbath day where where was it first stated and mentioned i'm going to give you two verses to begin with the first obviously if you're familiar with the bible genesis chapter 2 right it's the first place it's mentioned and then i'm going to take you to exodus 20 where it's put into the enshrined in the 10 commandments okay so we're going to read that if you can join me then let's do it better in fact here we go genesis 2 chapter 2 verses 1 to verse 3 if you can join me and so the heavens and the earth were completed and all their heavenly lights by the seventh day God completed his work which he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because on it he rested from all his work which God had created and made now that's a magnanimous verse you know i, I don't want to expound this verse but it says in one line Uh, what happened in Ge- in genesis 1 it says god made the heavens and the earth that's a magnanimous statement you know in two places in the bible it actually says in zechariah and isaiah that god stretched out the heavens you know it didn't take billions of years it probably took a billionth of a second for god to poof just do it all and it's amazing these these galaxies these pulses these stars these solar system and we little blue planet hum ek tikka blue tikka and we smaller tikka in that blue tikka god made that boom one shot isn't that amazing that's who our god is and he bible says he knows the stars by name okay is that amazing but what did god do he did that not in 7 days he did that in 6 days and on the seventh day god stepped back he wasn't tired in like oh bahut thak chuka hu no he stepped back what is his rest we will understand but on the seventh day he rested stood back and says god admired his work he said wow this is good all of it okay and what did he do he blessed the seventh day and he sanctified it because on it he rested now Let's go to Exodus 20 where this is enshrined in the 10 commandments. So when did God start the rhythm of the 7 day rest before the law or after the law? Before the law from creation. Wow. Now in the 10 commandments Exodus 20 verse 9 to verse 11. Join me please if you will. For 6 days you shall labor and do all your work but the seventh day is a sabbath of the lord your god on it you shall not do any work you or your son or your daughter or your male slave or your female slave or your cattle or your resident who stays with you for in six days it echoes back what was said in genesis 
the lord made the heavens and the earth the sea and everything that is in them and he rested on the seventh day for that reason the lord blessed the sabbath day again it says and he made it holy or sanctified it exodus 20 verse 9 was 11 now what's the definition of sabbath and the understanding of exodus 20 so i'm going to take you there what is the meaning of the word sabbath and then we will just glean through that verses of exodus 20 okay you with me Okay, I'll ask you at the end of the, you know how I do, no? At the end of the message, I'll ask you, and you have to tell me everything by heart without looking at your notes. Okay, you ready for this? All right, bahut acha. All right, Sabbath. It's a Jewish Sabbath. It comes from the word Shavat. Everybody say Shavat. Turn to your neighbor, smile at them. Say it with a smile. Others, it'll sound like a threat. Okay, say Shavat. Shavat. All right. Shavat. Okay. All right, Sabbath. Okay, you learned a little Hebrew this morning. So it means very simply, what does Shabbat mean? It means rest. So turn to somebody and say it in a restful way. Say it's rest. Shabbat means rest. Say it that way. Shabbat means rest. Rest. All right, wonderful. Isn't that simple? What is God saying? Rest. What would God say today in the 21st century? He would say, chill. Yeah? Say, chill, rest. Okay? But it's, it's, it's a very deep, profound chill. It's a very deep, beautiful rest. We'll come to that. But now let me take you, as I promised, into Exodus 20, verses 9 to verse 11, where we'll just glean through those verses where it's enshrined in the Ten Commandments. And there are five things we need to observe. Five things. How many things? Five. Turn to your neighbor next to you and say, don't sleep, Shannon is watching. Okay? Five things that we need to observe in this verses. Okay? You're with me? All right? And I'll ask you immediately after this. All right? So you've got to tell me by heart. So, jo likle hai, aap kripya copy na kare. All right? So you write, okay? All right, here we go. The first thing that God says in this, He says, remember... Remember the Sabbath day. So the first thing that God commanded his people is to remember the rest day. Remember the Sabbath day. It means don't forget to take the day off. Simple. Don't forget. Every seventh day, take a day off. Simple. Remember. Prepare for it. Plan your schedule, whether it's Google Calendar or whether it's Microsoft Excel. Like how I use. Okay. Seven days should be the day off. Rest. Don't load it. All right, here we go. The second thing is don't just take a, take a day off. It's, he said, keep it holy. What? Keep it holy. Keep it holy. What does it mean? Now, that word, this thing, changes the meaning of rest. He didn't say go to watch, go to Imagica. He didn't say go and just, you know, Go ballistic. It says keep it holy. It means set it aside from the all other days as special. How do you make it special? Today's Mother's Day, right? Once in a year Mother's Day. So you make it special for mother, right? You don't go to mom and say, mom, I want you to cook more than you have cooked in the last one year. I mean, that's a terrible thing to do, right? You make it special for her. So you'll plan to give mom extra focus, extra attention. Yes, talk to me. You, 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 will, you, will, you will do things for her to make her feel special. How do I make the Sabbath special? Now, the word use is holy. Now, what it means is that you keep this rest to... Or unto the Lord. Uh, that changes everything. That changes everything. So, don't worry about that AC. It's not going to come off and fly on you. Okay? Just worry. It's doing its job. It doesn't have a Sabbath. It's supposed to work. Okay? So, yeah. In other words, the rest is not to be aimless, but God-centered rest. Does that make sense? God is saying, I want you to Make this rest unto me. I want you to focus on me. I want you to shift your attention on me more than what you would on the other six days. 
I want you on this day, you to be more concentrated, more steady, and keep your focus on me. Does that make sense? So remember, keep it holy. Number three, it ought to be one out of every seven. It does not say it has to be a Sunday. It says that you just work six days, but on the rhythm, the seventh should be the day off. It should be a day of rest. It says in verse 9, six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. Work six, rest one. Turn to somebody next to you and say, work six, but rest one. I like the way some of you are like, matlab samaj gaya na? Usko jo bhi bolna hai, bolne do. Am log apna kud ka karega. No, 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 no. Turn to somebody and say, work six, rest one. <laughs> if the person next to you is not talking to you, just turn the person behind you and say, work six, but rest one. Yeah, that's good. That's the pattern. It, it, it does not say it has to be the last day of the week or the first day of the week because when this was given, this, there was no concept of weeks. The pattern is what is important, not which day. Six days you work, seventh, chutti. But what kind of chutti? What kind of rest? Focus on God. Ah, that changes. Now, number four, from that verse, no cheating, <laughs> no fudging. Yeah, that's what God was saying. God was not saying, you rest and make your servants work or even your ox work. You see, God was so detailed. He say, he, what he was saying was, no fudging by saying, well, I'll keep it, but I'll put my maid to work, set my ox to threshing with a carrot in front of his nose. Okay? If you did that, you missed the point. If you try to keep the business running by using servants or animals or relatives, God was saying, everyone gets the rest. Because by doing that, you see, one of the aspects of the Sabbath was this. It was you testifying to people, I belong to God. And I want you to know that. It was the people of God declaring to the world, because the concept in the world is simple. You want more money, you work more. You heard that? You want more money, you work harder. God was saying, you want to be blessed? The seventh day, this is what I'm going to say, okay? I know what I'm saying. is more important than what you do on the six days. Because the seventh day is your declaration of your faith in me that your work is not the provider. I am your provider. <laughs> you got it? You know how serious was God about the Sabbath? There are two kinds of Sabbath with respect to a timeline. One was a weekly, right? The six days you work and seventh you rest. And one was a seven yearly. Every seventh year, whole of Israel had no work. One full year, the land would rest, the animals rest, everyone's taken a break. Now, just, this was not part of my notes. I want to say this very quickly. because Just to help you understand how blessed the people of Israel were and how blessed God wants us to be. What they would sow and reap on the sixth year. Hear me carefully. God was saying this. What you sow and reap on the sixth year will be enough for your sixth year, your seventh year, and your eighth year. Because eighth year you will sow and then at the end of the year you'll receive it. You got what I'm saying? God was saying, I'll bless you so much if you keep me first. Does it make sense? Who wouldn't want to serve a God like this? And the fifth point was the basis of this commandment. The verse 11. God's rest after creation. Why was God saying, keep the seventh day? God was saying, join me See, here's the point of this rest. This is not a rest. Okay, look up at me. He was saying, this is not a rest outside of me. You are joining me in my rest. You are entering into my rest. One day I will talk about 
the different dimensions of the Sabbath because there is the Sabbath of the weekly. There's the Sabbath of the church. It's the, the age of grace where we have ceased from our works and we are now abiding in the work of Christ where God is working in us, through us, with us. You getting it? And then one day we will enter into the eternal Sabbath of God. Okay, we'll talk about that later. But here's the point. What God was saying is, join me in my rest and join me in admiring two things. Number one, all that I've done for you, all that I've given you, and most of all, join me in admiring myself. Admire me, hallow me, Exalt me in your life. Because when you do that, you will fear no lack. You will fear no evil. You will fear not the present. You will fear not the future. You will know that I am the Lord your God. Creator of the heavens and the earth. I am your father. <laughs> Make sense? Now look at me. Tell me the five things. <laughs> Here we go. Don't look. And display team, don't cheat. Okay, here we go. Number one, what do you think was from Exodus 20? What was the first thing? Remember, wow, remember the Sabbath day. Don't forget. Number two, keep it holy. That changed the, 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 the way of resting. So it was not chill and, you know, I slept for like 14 hours, dude. I couldn't get out of my bed. Or I was just binging on Netflix. That's why it's shutting down. <laughs> Priya got the joke. No, 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 it's not that. It is getting a focus, a special focus on God. Number three. First is what? Number two. Number three. Work six. Rest one. Number four. Louder, louder. No fudging. All right. Uh, say, okay, you know, Samir, I'll take a break. You better keep the show on. No. All right, and number five, the basis of this whole thing is because God himself rested on the, on the seventh day and he wants us to join in his rest, okay? Now, let, let's understand this more. You're enjoying this? Okay, let's go further. Now, what is the signal? Let's get a little more deeper, all right? We just waddled in the water, pedaled in the water. Now, let's go a little deeper, okay? All right, uh, you're coming with me? Okay, you have no choice. Come. All right, the significance of the Sabbath day and its blessing is beautiful. It's beautiful. You know, I'm already hearing of people, as I mentioned last Sunday, who've been going out to see God. Like they take a day off at work or two days and they're going out with two, three friends to seek the Lord. I want to tell you something. You will now understand that it's a big deal in the heart of God. <laughs> it's a big deal. When, when you say God... I'm just going to put a pause on my roles and responsibilities. I honor all of that is special. But I'm going now to seek you. Oh, it blesses the heart of the Lord. And we do that every week. God says, that's my daughter. That's my son. He trusts me. He trusts me. He's taking this day off to make me special on this day. Does it make sense? All right, here we go. Now, both the verses we read, Genesis 2, 3, and Exodus 20 in the Ten Commandments say, use two words. Do you remember those two words? Don't look there. Which were those two words? There were two words that God used to make that day special. He blessed and he sanctified it. He blessed it and he hallowed it, sanctified it. Turn to somebody next to you and say, God blessed it. And God hallowed it. Yeah, you're talking to somebody, no? See, I'll, 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 do, I'll be a little naughty. I want to tell the person next to you that if their friend is not talking to you, that means they're being naughty, okay? So you get your friend to talk to you, okay? Say it again. Here we go. One, two, three. What are the two words God used? God said, blessed and hallowed. Lovely, lovely. Now, if you, if you remember Genesis 1, you know, I was, I was rehearsing it with uh, Anaya this week because they did it in the, ch in, the, in the children's ministry last week. You know, Genesis 1 account, God made the heavens and the earth in six days. And, seven. and I kept saying, Dad, it's seven days. I said, no, I read my Bible well, it's six days. Okay, on the seventh day. 
By the way, Anaya has been very upset with me because the services got short. So for, for quite a few times, she's had a talk. She said, how can you make the service one hour? It's supposed to be a four hour service. I said, man, I thought I was a Pentecostal. She sees four times more Pentecostal. She said, how can you do that? And it was like a real issue with her. She lied on the bed and she was frowning. She's like, this, how can the service be short? We just go and then we have to come out. How can you make the service one hour? It's a four hour service, dada. Yeah, amen. I said, you come and talk to the church. <laughs> All right, great. Wow. May our children grow up loving the house of God. Amen. Now, in the account of Genesis 1, what did God do after he made everything? In Genesis 1, he blessed it. Right? He blessed. He blessed man. What did he bless them with? Essentially, he blessed them with the blessing of fertility to become fruitful. And the Indian and the Chinese went ballistic. All right. He blessed all of his creation with the blessing of fertility, with health and fertility. Remember something, if anything grows and multiplies, it's healthy. So God said, be fruitful and 1.3 billion Indians. <laughs> right? So he blessed all of creation. Now, so when God blesses creation, it becomes fruitful. But in chapter 2, he does something different. He blesses a day. You got it? He blesses a day. What does it mean for God to bless a day? I think it means that he makes a specific day a time of blessing unique from the other six days. Now, I don't know from scripture, I am not able to accumulate what those blessings are. I believe God deliberately didn't articulate it. He basically said, I bless this day. So there is, sorry guys, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it has its blessing, right? You bless that at home, bless that work, bless your travel. But God said that all of those six days, I'll bless you. Yes, I'll bless you. I'll bless you for the sake of my son. I'll bless you because you stand in his righteousness and in his grace. But the seventh day is different from all the six days. It's, it's different. My aim today is not to tell you the blessings. My aim is to tell you why God made it special. Now you go and find out what are those blessings on the seventh day when you make it special to God. You got it? So, when God <clears throat> blesses a man, what happens to that man? That man becomes richly blessed. Yup. He becomes blessed in every area and aspect of their life. You'll go to trials, you'll go to testings, but you'll be blessed. When God blesses a land, what does the land become? Fruitful. <laughs> when he blesses a day, that period of time becomes exceptionally rich with the blessings of God. That, that 24 hours, something special happens for those who say, God, I'm stopping or pausing all of this. And I'm going to devote extra time, extra concentration and focus on you. Me and my family and your people. Make sense? I'm going to rest. I'm going to say one side note. The primary blessing of the rest is not recouping from tiredness, though it's included in it. The primary purpose of the rest is not recouping from tiredness that's included in it, refreshing and renewal, because God was not tired when he rested. The primary purpose of the rest is to enjoy God. <laughs> Let me go ahead. So, he blessed it. And then what is the second thing he did? He hallowed it or sanctified it. It means... He set aside the day for special focus on what is holy. That is God and his works. 
Take time to look at the cross. Take time to look at the love and the sacrifice of God the Father, God the Son, and the work of the Holy Spirit. Take time to look at creation. Oh, yes. You know, there was a time sometime back where I looked up at the sky, you know, just the sky, and I realized I had not looked at the sky for very long that time. It was just beautiful. There was this blue sky, just the fluffy clouds. And I was like, God, this is beautiful. And you know what, God? No two mornings, no two evenings are the same. You paint the sky new every day for me. I was like, God, wow. So beautiful. I, I, thank God if we are able to go to a hill station or a beautiful holiday and you're able to see the beach. But hey, Mumbai is beautiful. You just have to be at the right place at the right time. Just, this is beautiful. You know, birds chirping. Just quiet. Like, wow. Take time. Take time to know that the God who feeds the sparrow that comes and sits on your window is well able to take care of you. He said, look at the sparrows. We don't have time to look at the sparrows. Do it on the Sabbath day. <laughs> look at the lilies of the field. We don't have time to look at the flowers. Take time. So you look at the flowers and say, man, that flower is so beautiful. That, that bird doesn't tithe. They have no FDs, no mutual funds. I mean, they don't put in shares, but they are blessed. Even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of them is what Jesus said. Are you not of more value than sparrows and lilies and roses? You're far more precious to God. Take the seventh day and enjoy God. So when you take these two words, okay, blessing and hallow, how do you fit this together? So here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to read through my notes to make it clear so I don't miss out. Isn't it obvious that the hallowing is included in the blessing? And the blessing is included in the hallowing. So when you hallow God, you're blessed. You got it? One in the other. It's inseparable. When you, the blessing is that you could hallow God. And when you hallow God, you give a special focus. You're blessed. <laughs> so when you hallow God and focus your attention on him, you receive more blessing than if you would keep on busying yourself seven days a week with secular affairs, thinking that professional advancement and money and worldly entertainment are the route to true happiness. It's the reverse. When you seek your blessing in God, rather than in the products of human labor, you hallow him. My work is important to the extent that I hallow him in my work. And one of the ways I hallow him in my work is when I don't work on the seventh day. Did you get that? <laughs> and I say, you know, God, I'm grateful for my work. I'm grateful for my boss. I'm grateful for my job. I'm grateful that I can have a car, I can travel, or I can go by train or whatever. I'm grateful for all I have. I'm grateful for my house. But you know, God, you're my father, you're my provider, you're my greatest treasure, not these things. <laughs> Makes sense? And so when you seek your blessing in God rather than the products of human labor, you hallow him and you honor his holiness as the greater wealth. And this is a very important part of our relationship with God and of our faith in him. Do you remember in Matthew 6 what Jesus said? Before I go ahead, do you remember what Jesus said? He said, is not life, you can complete that verse for me if you're familiar, is not life. Do you remember that verse? More than food, shelter, and clothing. So in my Bible, I've actually scribbled down, then what is life? Just saying, is not life more than, he didn't say it, it does not include it. Is not life more than food, shelter, and clothing? That's when he used the example of the sparrows and the lilies. So I wrote, what is life? And the answer is in John 17, verse 1 and 2. He says, this is eternal life. <laughs> this is eternal life, the quality of life. 
This is everlasting. This is life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Life doesn't consist in what we wear, what we eat and where we live and what we drive and what is my position in work. All that is temporary. All that has got value and meaning and significance, but it's temporary. Invite God in all of that and then take a day off to say, God, my life doesn't consist. My heart, strings of my heart are not wired to these strings. All my strings and springs of joy are in you, God. Make sense? So if, if that hits a crisis, my faith will not be in crisis and my joy will not be in jeopardy. Does that make sense? So I'm going to summarize and I'm going to leave the rest for next time when I share. I want to summarize it with God's rest. So the reason given in both Genesis 2 and Exodus 20, why God blessed and hallowed the seventh day is that God, on it, God rested from all his work, which he had done in creation. And what does it mean that God rested? It means at least that he was satisfied with his work of creation, was complete and was very good. And he, his rest means that he wanted to now stand back as it was in leisure and savor the beauty and completeness of his work. In other words, God made these this heavens and the earth. He made you and me. And then he stepped back and he admired what he had done. Now what does it mean when God is asking Shannon and you to join in that rest? He's, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase this. Okay, So hear me. The real basis of his hallowing and blessing on the day of rest is that he's saying, let my highest creature, who's his highest creation in all of creation? You know, you're more precious. One of you is more precious than all the stars put together. <laughs> and God is saying, let my highest creation, let my daughter, let my son, the one in my image, stop every seven days and commemorate with me the fact that I am the creator who has done all of this. Have you had the joy of sitting on a beach alone on a sunset? And it's like you're sitting with Abba Father and saying, Father, this just blows my mind. You painted this all for me. And so you sit with Abba Father and you admire all that he's done. Let him stop working and focus on me that I am the source of all that he is. I'm the fountain of every blessing. I have made the very hands and mind that which he uses to work on the six days. Let one day out of seven demonstrate that all land, all animals, all raw materials, all breath and strength and thought and emotion and everything comes from me. Let man look to me in leisure one day out of seven for the blessing that is so elusive in the affairs of this world. So God instituted this weekly reminder for two things in summary. One is that all true blessing comes from his grace. You can shout a loud amen if you believe that. If God would withhold his hand, no matter how hard you try, no matter how many contacts you have, and no matter how talented you are, you come to zero. Everything good in Shannon and everything good that Shannon has and will ever have is because my God is a good God. Okay? And I take, I, I need to remember that every day but I take one day to exceptionally remember that. <laughs> the other is that we hallow him and honor him and keep the day holy if we seek the fullness of his blessing by giving our special attention to him on that day. Amen. Amen. I, I want to share more, but we'll do that the next Sabbath. All right? But I believe that I've shared enough for you to enjoy this Sabbath and the Sabbaths to come. 
And so please understand, I, I have no issues with, uh, with us enjoying the good things that God has blessed us with in life. No, 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 no. I will make that more clear in my next part of this message. But my point is this, that there must be one day where we put a pause on all the other things and say, God, I want you to know that you are my greatest treasure and you're my supreme joy. And it, it reminds me of a simple example of a husband and wife uh, to go out on a date. And I, I sincerely hope that the couples here do have your marriage time on a weekly basis. Where you take time once a week or at least once in two weeks in a tough city like Mumbai and you make it special for your spouse and you, you make it clear with the way you plan that time and what you do in that time to say, you are special to me. That after God, you are the most and, and his salvation, you are the most precious gift that I have. And you, you, you make it special. But how would it be that if the spouse went on a date, if both of you go on a date, and then you're distracted? And you're on your phone, or you're taking calls, and the VP is calling you, or the MD is calling you, and you're just sitting, you've ordered the food, you've just eaten food, and you've gone. But no, it's about enjoying each other, right? And, and what would it feel like if, if, if the spouse reminds a spouse who's busy and, and the spouse says, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I know we need to do it. And you, he gives the impression that, oh, gosh, you know, okay, okay, I'll fit it in somewhere, you know, because I don't want you to nag me about it. No, 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 no. You missed the whole point. It was about enjoying. It's about loving. It's about being, making it special because you love the person. That's... In marriage, that's with parents, that's with friends, right? How much more with the God who loves you with an infinite and everlasting love, who gave you his only son. Would you take a day off every week? Would you take out time every week to say, God, I want to make this special between us. I want you to know that I love you more than anyone and anything else in my life. And I'm going to take time to go on a walk just with you. I'm going to take time to just be in your word or just worship or just sing a song, though I may sound like a frog when I, you know, croaking, but I'm still going to do that because I know you love my voice. I'm going to sing to you and tell you how much I love you, God. And I'll tell you, that seventh day blessing is different from all the blessings of the six days. May the Lord bless you. <laughs> Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. <laughs> Let me just pray with you. Father, thank you for this beautiful um, afternoon and just thank you for this uh, precious time together where we have remembered the significance of the Sabbath day. Oh God, we thank you that you have taught us, you have shown us in your word how we need to live a life in which we are blessed. And God, we are blessed when we honor you, when we worship you, when we obey you, when we enjoy you above everything else in our lives. Help us, O oh Lord, that we would be people passionate for your presence, passionate to please you, and to see you glorified in every area and aspect of our lives. Thank you for this beautiful uh, morning. All those who have joined online, Father, I pray that you would bless them and bless your people who are gathered here. Lord, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.